Welcome back to Mixed Media Creations with me, Creative Katie, Karen Burchill. Today we have three tutorials for mixed media mini canvases. These can be turned into Christmas ornaments, stocking stuffers, fridge magnets, or displayed on little mini easels as well. Links to supplies can be found in the description box below. Don't forget to subscribe and select the option to be notified as soon as I upload a new video. So I had these mini canvases, they're three by five, and I put wall compound or flexible modeling paste through a stencil onto all of them. I did all seven in a row and I, you know, got out the, made the mess once and cleaned up once. So as these were sitting there, I had leftover gold paint and leftover copper paint from other um, projects, and I just applied it in, onto this one 3x5 stencil. So this is a Crafter's Workshop stencil, and it's a mini one, and I'll put the link to it if, if I can find it, if it's still available through Amazon. And I'll put the name if not. And... So I have the gold and bronze, and what I want to create here is kind of that old copper patina look. So I grabbed my Prussian blue and this light aqua, and I'm just going to rub that in and see where I can go with this. And I want it in the nooks and crannies. You know the look I'm going for, like the old aged copper pots with the, with the, you know, patina show it shining through. Now there you can buy pastes that create this and different things. And I don't own any of that, and so I can't speak about how they work. But I know what colors they are, and so that's what basically I'm playing with. Some of this Prussian blue, I'm putting it in there, rubbing it off, and I'm just playing with the colors till I get what I think represents that patina look. So this is a baby wipe, and I, I use the Huggies brand and the non-scented because I don't like the smell of the extra chemicals. Now I could have sprayed my uh, favorite Starburst, the Afternoon Delight Denim, but then that is not, that could be wa activated by water. So I'm just sticking to acrylics this time. And I'm liking the look. I'm removing some of the paint a little bit more so I get more of that copper gold peeking through. I'm edging it with the dark blue, dark Prussian blue, one of my favorite colors. And I'm just, Yes, till I get that yumminess. Now, as I said in my last video, and I'll put a link to that, where you can see other mini canvases being created and get some different ideas. Some of them I used my flexible modeling paste by Liquidex, and others I used my wall compound that I bought at Home Hardware, just no name brand kind of kind of stuff and you can buy a big bucket of it and actually I have a lot of luck with the wall compound and if you struggle with getting too much seepage with the modeling pastes try the wall compound the one thing I do is I do give it a good coat of gesso after the wall compound just to make sure that it takes whatever mediums I'm going to throw at it different wall compounds are going to take the color less or more and I just want to maybe predict exactly how it's going to turn out. But if you don't have gesso, you can skip that step. You can use a, a coat of white acrylic paint as well, just to seal it. So I'm just adding a little bit more of the gold and the copper. And I've used, for the metallics, I've used the Liquitex brand. I've used Martha Stewart um, paint. And I've used... Um, the artist's loft. If I want to do it more dry where I want a little less coverage, I tend to stick to the heavier bodied paints. So now that I have this gorgeous patina background, I want to pick my focal point. And that butterfly was just too colorful, too bright. I'll, I'll put him aside. He'll find his home. Another one. 
I have these dragonflies, which I like the silhouette. You could put a Julie Nutting doll that I have ready, some hearts. So I'm just kind of additioning various bits and pieces that I have in my stash. At different times, I may go on a binge and I cut out all these dragonflies or butterflies or hearts either by hand or using my silhouette machine. So I decide that I'm going to go with the dragonflies. I absolutely love dragonflies. And there's a myth that say that a dragon line, if they appear in your yard, that their angels are near or you're being visited by a loved one. And I really like that sentiment. Um, and it was definitely something that meant something to me. So I typed this out on my word processor and played with the fonts. Now the white is just a little too stark. So I'm just get, grabbing some of that copper or gold paint. I'm not even sure which it is. I think it's the copper and just painting over top of this just to age the paper. So it matches the background a little bit more. But again, that is a personal preference. If you like the stark white contrast, go with that. And now I'm drying it. And once dry, I'm just going to glue that on. And I'm not sure if I edge this with black or not. Um, we'll watch and find out. I think that's what I'm doing right now. I'm just edging it with a little bit of black. And that just, again, sets it off from the background. And you can see the textured background there and the shimmer and gold that's just shining through. That's the effect I love. Now, because all the product on here is permanent, I don't have to worry about color coming off at, at any point in time. So I'm just using gel medium and applying the quote, and then I'll be applying the dragonflies as well. As I was saying, with some of the focal points, I, you know, just... You know, if I feel like being in the studio, some days I just do a whole bunch of cutting of various ones, or I might just paint them all black so they're ready to go, and they're just in my stash when I'm doing a mini canvas like this, an ATC, or an iCAD. Eventually, they all seem to find a home. Now, I'm deciding to leave the wings so it kind of looks 3d I really like that effect so that finishes that card so the next card I've used this swirl pattern and I've put either wall compound or flexible modeling paste I honestly don't remember which um, onto the back and let this dry and this is a I believe it's a folk art pattern stencil and it was one of the very first ones that I bought and I absolutely love it it's 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 one of those that if it if it should you know fall apart I would rebuy it because it is so very versatile so I dug out my distress crayons and in you know following the colors of the rainbow I'm just applying a coat of the distress crayons you know pushing a little bit here and there to get it in then I decide that I'm going to activate it with gel medium or is this gesso I'm not sure I believe it's gesso and it's a good way of activating it and then it kind of it makes it permanent as well the gesso because it is white though will turn the colors into a more pastel version of themselves so be prepared for that and I, I kind of work over that and give it another layer afterwards and get those vibrant colors that I'm looking for. If you get some of the distress crayons stuck in the nooks and the crannies and you can't quite activate it, if you apply the heat tool to it, it will melt it and then it's very easy to activate it and spread it out so you don't end up having those little globby bits. Now I admit on this one, this is a pattern or similar pattern to something that I've done previously in an art journal page um, or an iCAD. And lots of times when I, you know, I'm playing around and following prompts on a challenge, 
you know, you come up with an idea that you like. And that's what our journey is all about. It's about creating those ideas that maybe you're going to use in part or in whole on a future project. Kind of the prototypes. So because I want them a little bit more vibrant, I'm going over the bands of color with the Distress Crayon again and just getting them a little whiter. Because there's a good coat of gesso on there and because there's a, a layer of the Distress Crayon, it just goes on that much easier. And the higher areas seem to get a little bit darker and I really like that effect although I totally go the other way. So I'm going to put this little ballerina, and again, this is something that I've cut multiples out of using my Silhouette, and I think this was either a purchase file that I purchased off of Silhouette. So I decide that instead of going dark on the high spots, I'm going to go light. I want these swirls to just have a tinge of white. So I'm putting the white acrylic paint on the pad of my finger, very little, very, you know, I kind of tap it up and down and get it kind of tacky. And I'm just rubbing it on the high point of where the texture paste is. And I've said it before, when I'm bring, trying to bring out texture, I will either go dark or lighter or metallic. And sometimes I do a combination of two of those. And I really like how that brought out the swirl, kind of pushed the bright colors back just a bit. And now I'm just being strategic about where I want a little bit more white. And if I caution you here, slow but sure little bit at a time. Build up those layers and get it darker. If you try to put too much on at one time, you're going to get too much paint and it's going to end up looking like a blob and you're not going to be happy. But if that happens, a good coat of gesso and start over. There, I kind of got a blob and I just used baby wipe to get that little bit off. But had that not worked, I would have just started from scratch and started over. So I have my ballerina and I'm thinking about leaving her white but again I you know I'm a big fan of the silhouettes the contrast that comes with silhouettes so I'm just grabbing my Liquitex basics and painting this ballerina I'm thinking this would make a very cute little ornament um, a fridge magnet for for a little girl that's just in love with dance and ballerina cut out the word dance and I selected a black background but then I kind of fussy cut it around it and I'm applying both of these onto the background with some gel medium. Now the distress crayons are still water soluble so if you put liquid on them they're not going to instantly activate but if you put liquid and then put pressure on it it will so if you're very gentle with the gel medium you will not reactivate it and that's one of the reasons I love them so much more than the gelatos or even sprays so I'm getting out some black and just going to edge it in black and the reason for this is it's matching the lettering that I have and the black of the silhouette you want the different components to read with each other and here are the two finished mini canvases now on to the third one and this one's well on their way because of course I forgot to hit the record button Sometimes that happens when you get in the thick of creating. So this is, I'm actually duplicating a art journal page that I recently created. And I thought it would look really cute on this mini canvas. So what I've done here is I put a coat of ivory paint and I'm dry brushing with some brown and some of the light green. And again, it's either wall compound or flexible modern clays. I really can't tell the difference, and I don't remember which one it is, but I put all of it on. 
and I put a coat of gesso. As I was saying, then we put a coat of ivory paint and I'm dry brushing with burnt umber and this Artist Loft green paint. Sometimes when I, is there a color that I want to use or I want to try to use, I might buy a cheaper version of it and see if I actually use it. If I find it, it's something that find its way into my palette and I use more and more, I um, try to use, go and use it more. I'm adding a little bit of Hooker's Green here just to add that little, that depth. I'm not trying to get a solid color. I want to leave some of the white space or ivory space. Now I'm getting out my script stamp and I'm applying the script there. I just love this look. And unlike when I did the original page, I now know what order would make more sense and when it's easier to apply it. So putting the script stamped on is much easier right now than after I paint the flowers on. So I'm deciding which is going to be the top and which is going to be the bottom. Now the leaves that I painted on here I wasn't really happy with. So I decide that I'm going to see if I have a stencil that's the right size for this mini canvas and I'm just stenciling on some leaves into the background. I might be painting over this and that's okay because the, some of these are going to show through. This I believe is a dil dilution stencil. I think it came with a stamp if I'm not mistaken. Didn't like the bottom so very quickly because it's acrylic paint underneath. I was able to just get it off with a baby wipe. really liking the look of this and actually you know this you put a focal point could have put a, just a butterfly in the middle of this and this would have been just lovely so often you can create the very similar or the same kind of backgrounds and do very different things with the focal point that's going to turn it into a different work of art these are my acrylic inks and this one is copper or bronze and I'm just adding some drippage in, on there and I want that to get caught into the nooks and crannies. Now this is an old bottle I bought it on. It was discounted um, for obvious reasons. So it needs a little bit of help with my finger and a little bit more water to um, move around. The thing about the acrylic inks are, are that they are permanent when dry. So once this is dry, I don't have to worry if I add any wet layers later. But this is going to reactivate. And I like the brown in there, and it's got, in real life, it's got a shimmer to it that I also absolutely love. So I have the ivory, and I have this black cherry. These are Serem Coat acrylics. They're craft paints. Um, in the art journal page, I use the Dilutions Pomegranate Seed, and it stayed true it was more on the purple shade this one goes pink when you add the ivory so I had to uh, play with that now if I was doing this again I would have added started a little bit higher this was a little too low in my mind and I'm just adding some darks and lights with the acrylic paint very free now on the can on the art journal page I used my finger to do this but the canvas size doesn't allow for that, so I'm using a very small round brush. And I'm just painting in the stems using that hooker's green. And I like how the leaves pick through. I really like how the leaves kind of cascade over the top. I really, I think that's a good addition. I'm thinking about using this or a very similar um, idea as an idea to teach um, a mixed media class here in Victoria. So if you think that's a good idea, you know, leave me a comment. Now I'm splattering with the black cherry paint just to add a little bit into, into the background. There's lots of texture and interest 
in this background. And for me, that's what mixed media is all about. Not only using multiple medias, um, mediums, but also building layers and texture. So I've got some brown and I just want to bring up a little bit of that. Um, the texture from the modeling paste a little bit more and I'm going with a little bit of brown and a little bit of black and just very if it's not a dry brush technique but dry finger technique I don't know now this is a stamp it was actually there was in the middle of a rectangle or triangle and I just cut out the word joy because I wasn't I never used the stamp the way it was and it just occurred to me, I could cut it out and use just the word joy here. So sometimes when you see bargain stamps, think about how you can alter them. And I'll be uploading a video in, in a few days where I show just how to do that with some more um, kind of dollar store bargain stamps that I purchased. Just adding a little bit of black using the float technique. I, I, I try not to do that and grab the angle brush, but then I decided I should do it the, the real way. I'm just adding a little bit for highlighting. You can do it with a lighter color or, or darker color for shading or use a lighter color for highlighting. I could go in there with white if I wanted to, but I liked it as it was. Thanks for watching this video. As always, um, keep watching and you can see some of the photos of these mini canvases. I hope you give this a try. It's a lot of fun.